dream. Probably, probably everybody here had a dream, right? right. Wow. Like a, a nightmare. Let's say a nightmare, wow. a very bad nightmare that you wake wow. up all sweaty, all uh, scared. For example, you were in a high place and you fell, and you were, when you fell, you actually I'm fell like the fall. You, you fell, and you felt that thing. Everybody felt that some some night, right? Content or buy everything. Uh, the thing General is, I'm talking about. if it's so easy to There's cheat on our senses, to make us believe that we are somewhere else as that, then how can we be certain that this reality is absolutely what we believe that it is? I'm not saying this reality doesn't exist. I'm saying it might be something that we don't know about. We might believe that we are somewhere where we are actually not. Now the thing is, human senses are very flawed. They are very, they are very big flaws and we can't be certain that what we are seeing, what we are hearing is the actual truth. For example, let's look at some animals. Um, let's give the example of the mole. The mole is blind. I mean, not exactly, it kind of sees, but it's almost blind, almost 100% blind. It sees, the, it feels the world in a different way than humans do. What is a color for a mole? It's cool, bro. What is a color for a, for a mole? It doesn't exist. But the mole sees the smells, it feels the smells in a completely different spectrum than we do. It feels many, many more smells than we humans do. Or bats, for example. Bats, they see, but they don't uh, direct themselves during the night with their sight. They emit ultrasonic sounds that bounce off from the objects that are in front of them and come back to their ears. And thus, a, they feel the world allow, or, around them with their senses, with their, uh, uh, with their hearing. You see what I mean? Now, why do we see colors to begin with? Colors in, are in reality molecules. The shape of molecules reflect uh, infra ultraviolet light, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's infrared, I'm not 100% uh, sure. It reflects sunlight in a certain way that it shows us humans a color. Yeah. But other animals, some animals are dal daltonic. They only see you know, black, white, gray. How can we be certain that our truth is the absolute real truth and their truth is not real? Their truth is just, just bullshit. That's because we see the world in our way. And that's why I always say the truth is perception. Our perception of the world is the, our truth. Now reality, absolute reality, I believe that there is an absolute reality, but we don't have access to it because our senses, again, they're very limited. They're limited to us, to what we see, what we feel, what we are. And uh, that's what I think, uh, you know, that's to base my thoughts about religion. Because I don't think religion is a bad thing. I just think we should evolve it with time. We should seek uh, better rules to impose on the people. Because let's be honest here, not everybody is intelligent. Example, example. Example? Yeah. Evolution what do you mean? in which aspect, in which side? What do you mean? What do you mean, example? Um, of, uh, of religion influencing the state? Give us some example. Okay, I have the best example for that, the Roman Empire. You know that the Romans, when they conquered a new people, for example, the Gauls or the um, or the Carthaginians, they sometimes would accept some of the foreign gods into their own pantheon. Why did they do that? Two reasons. First reason is because they wanted to uh, kind of, you know, Romanize those people, to make them feel a bit more at home. They wanted to feel them, oh, you know, we are conquerors, but at the same time, we're not complete tyrants. We are going to treat you well, right? So people don't feel like their culture and their ideology is being stolen from them. Second reason, the Romans were very clever, they were very intelligent, and they knew that the more gods you have, the less importance each god has. And the Romans used their gods to manipulate, to, um, to you know, put their people in order very well. That's why the emperors, you know, in the beginning, they were religious leaders. They were both religious and political leaders of Rome. Because they knew that if a person controls what God says, then the people will obey completely. Now, if the person only controls what humans say and what humans think, what humans do, only controls the might of the armies, you know, the people will obey when there's a soldier uh, beside them. But when there, there's no soldier, the people just will do whatever the fuck they want. Now, that's the thing about religion. We need religion so people will do what is, uh, uh, what functions, what will function better in a society without being constantly monitored. And I think that's the biggest use of religion as a tool, in the, as a tool of power. Uh, from your perspective? Of course, of course it's my perspective. But I can prove my perspective uh, pretty well, I think. I can prove that this makes a lot of sense. And, um, you know, if you, if you don't agree, you can prove your point. But if you want to prove your perspective uh, as the better perspective, because I think there are better and worse perspectives, I don't then we you're can. welcome to do so. I don't think Muslims can. I don't think Muslims can prove that. I think it has to come from your belief of 
reading and understanding everything that's out there in terms of literature across all religions and understanding that the truth for us, what we believe as Muslims, is the Quran. And then that derives that faith. Because I don't think you can be told, you can, I don't think there's any scientific or religion text that can prove consequences consequently right this is 100% it's got to come partly from faith yeah That's you need to choose thing. it you've got to choose it you've got to accept it and then you like you live by it I don't think it's not science religion is not science I don't personally other people might disagree might argue and try and ram it down your throat and say actually you know what we can prove it I don't think you can I think it's a, it's a matter of personal faith it's about believing and accepting it um, asking the right questions and sometimes you might not get the answers that you want or make sense of it immediately but I think there's for example there's stuff that I mean you think actually is that a coincidence or stuff that happens in your life that questions and you think actually might be a you know someone that's poorly in your you know your family or someone's passed away or a birth or whatever but these are triggers I think that allows you to think outside of the realms of science and logic and think about a deeper meaning as to what this all is. I'm not following only science and logic. Logic is based on our senses, which are flawed. But uh, what you're saying is our limited logic. Yeah, our limited I'm, logic. what I'm saying yeah. is you can't be certain of anything 100%. Now that's the, you see, we agree about that. But, but some people, like the guy who was no, here, no, the, no. Not, not this man, the, the other guy who left uh, a while ago, he said that he has uh, strict things he believes in that that is reality and that is the thing that I don't really appreciate because if we believe that some one truth is the absolute truth there is no argument about it that's it you can get and a Christian, we inevitably... you can get a Buddhist, you can get a Muslim all arguing the same truth but from different interpretations different perspectives. and so they will fight and so they will argue with each other for no reason so what I say is it's all about your faith and what you believe in and understand that our limited logic and truth will not truly grasp what God is and what's from the hereafter and what it's a belief, it's all about belief and having faith. So it's not, you know, I, I agree with you, I can't, I don't think there's anything that people can say or demonstrate through a test or a piece of logic or science that will get a Muslim or a non-Muslim to believe in the Quran. It's got about, you know, it's a, it's a lot of it is down to having that, not blind faith, but it's about having faith. Yeah, but, but look, man, do you think children have choice? I personally think that they should be given teachings around what's right and wrong. Okay, fair enough. And that isn't sure. about, you know, by a, by a book, per se. I think it's about logical, you know, don't hit that girl, you know, don't talk about, don't swear. That yeah, yeah, yeah. is what you should do. Because at that mind, at that stage, they can only grasp that. Yeah. If you start putting, I think, and I personally, if you start putting a headscarf on a little four-year-old, yeah. I think that's really confusing. True, true. But I do think I that I want, you... I want to have the same, I won't give the same speech to a kid as no, I gave uh, you guys you today. Because, you know, really you guys are grown up, you can understand what I'm saying. It's futile. But it's I think as they progress, then you step up and you accelerate and start to let them explore and ask their own questions. And I think through that, then they, through the questions and understanding, right, these are the, the texts and this is what I see and this is actually what Muslims believe in and this is what Christians believe in and this makes sense to me then I think that that's the best way that's yeah, the only man, way for but me. look for example if you and if you choose children, not to then you choose not to if you pick children in a religious state uh, in a Muslim or a Christian yeah. or whatever religious state the, the kids will almost I mean if the religion is strict on them yeah not like um, um, Catholics are in many countries in Europe because they you know they became very uh, let's say uh, they lost their way kind of they don't have a uh, right way they, they're just floating around, the Pope just says whatever is politically correct at this point. Uh, I don't really agree with that, but again, I wasn't a very huge fan of Catholicism, Catholicism to begin with, so I have you know mixed opinions about that. But listen, uh, if a child grows in a, um, in a state, strict, uh, like not, not Muslim, necessarily, yeah. like in a, a, in a strict Muslim, term. a Christian, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever, okay. in a strict religious yeah. family, I don't think the child will have that much choice whether to and believe that, or not to believe. And that is because not of the religion, that is because of the person or the parent or the family unit's interpretation of how to bring that child up. Yeah, but interpretation accept? forms religion. It's a, you it know, shouldn't do. They kind of, they kind of form each other. Uh, humans form religions and then the religions that other humans form 
form new uh, humans. You, you, you see what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a bit it's confusing. Like but yeah, exactly, it's exactly. It's like like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. humans invent religion. Oh, sorry, uh, but eventually the, re the religions they invented influence humans yeah. into um, believing a certain way or acting a certain way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. And uh, you know, I, I don't think we have that much of a big uh, discussion no, no, here because no, no, we yeah, basically yeah. agree on I agree. the basics. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the basics but, are the um, basics. But I think yeah. it's just about. From my perspective and your perspective, I think where we differ is you feel that religion is a set of guidelines that's put in place and invented by society to control that society, kind of, yeah. or keep them in check, or keep them aligned, or keep yeah. them in a belief system. Which is not, that, which is not necessarily a good thing yeah, or a bad yeah, yeah. thing. It might be good or it might be bad, depending on the situation. Whereas so, Muslims believe that I think religion is so much more, it's a way of life, and it is a form of belief and faith, and I personally think that I don't believe that you can force someone to believe. The religion in, in Islam, there's you no can, compulsion. But, uh, yeah, you can, you, you can, can it's not it, the right yeah, way. Do you know very, what I mean? It's not. It's, it's usually not right very way. violent. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the thing, come that's where it's back to, this, your, to your subject, you said, I don't think this is the real life for me. I never said that. I told, I said that uh, I'm not certain that the world as we think it is, is actually what it is. Yeah. That's the thing, because our senses are limited. And uh, we can't be absolutely certain that what we believe the world is, is actually what it is. Uh, that's my whole point. I'm not saying this is all fake, this is all a lie, but it might be. It might be. It might. How much percent, percentage? Huh? How much percentage? I don't know, man. <laughs> if I knew, I would be the most intelligent person on earth. Uh, but uh, look, man, it's basically uh, not really possible to know it for certain. Uh, again, because our senses are flawed and limited, we can't know absol for absolute certainty what is the actual reality. Now, that's where I draw the line between truth and reality. Because what is truth? I think, I would argue that truth is what a person thinks is reality. It's what a person interprets as reality. For example, if you get a man who uh, saw, you know, for example me, I saw uh, two guys far away over there near um, Winter Wonderland. One of them had a gun, the other guy fell down to the floor and died. From my perspective here, I think that the guy shot him. But from the reality is that there was another guy on the other side that I didn't see that shot the guy. But I don't know that because I didn't see him. So I believe that he got shot by the first man, by the man that I saw. What is this? This is the difference between truth and reality. Reality is something that I didn't see, but truth is something that I'm certain that I saw because I saw it right there. I just don't know the absolute truth. I just had no way of knowing the absolute truth. You know what I mean? For me, that's the difference between truth and reality. And religion kind of plays with that because it tells you, okay, this is truth and this is reality and you gotta believe this or you're fucked, you go okay. to hell. Okay, if they give you three choices, this life is chicken. Sorry? If they give you three choices, this life maybe is dream, or this life is maybe true or reality. Which one you select? Maybe. Well, maybe, maybe, Imagine maybe it's there's a lot of maybe. Dream, just truth like in the real or life. reality? Which one you select? Truth or reality? Or dream? Would I, which one would I select? Yeah. Oh, that's a funny. That's a funny question. I don't think uh, any being has the ability to perceive reality in its absolute. Because if you have the absolute senses to perceive reality, you erase your limits. Now, imagine a drawing. Imagine a drawing with pencil on a white sheet. Like a white sheet of paper, you, draw, you make a drawing with a pencil. The lines of the drawing are your limits. They are the things that limit you, that confine you in the being that you are. They don't allow you to be more than you are, but they don't allow you to stop existing. Now, if you erase those lines, those limits, what, what remains? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing remains. That is absolution. Absolution. Perfection is an existence. That's what I think. Because I don't think perfection can exist. Absolute perfection in that sense. So, no being, in my opinion, can perceive reality exactly as it is. So in that sense, you might say that reality doesn't exist at all because nobody perceives it. I don't know about that. I'm not 100% certain about it. But I would say that the truth we have can become better, but it can never become equal to reality. Okay, about the truth. Are you sure 100% that we are in a true life? No. No, I'm not. 
listen, many philosophers have discussed that. It's not just me that I, you know, pulled this out of my ass and I started spewing it around. No, you, look, people, you don't think that this is the uh, No, no, water. it's not real, it's not real. Listen, it's not just me, you, you can look it up. Uh, there are very, there are much more intelligent, more gifted people who made entire ideologies based on this idea that what we see as truth might not be the truth. Now, um, I gave you the example of the dream. You feel the dream, you see the dream. You know, a while ago, I wrote down uh, some of my dreams. I could, I could remember a lot of things. Faces, colors, names, numbers, uh, locations. Lots and lots of things. I did drawings sometimes of the dream. In your dream? Yeah, uh, no, no, not in the dream. Mm. After I woke up, I did drawings about the dream. I ex uh, explained almost exactly what happens, what happened, almost as if I lived through it. But, of course, I know it's not a dream. Um, now, if a dream can feel that real, how can you be certain that the life you're living right now is not a kind of dream? Okay, okay. But inside the dream, if they ask you that this is the dream, you don't believe it because you feel that it's real in inside the dream. Sometimes. When you wake up, you know this is the dream. Maybe your, our life is exactly like that. We are the dream of our origin. Maybe. Our origin. Oh shit, this guy came here now. <laughs> Fuck. Maybe we are in a dream, but inside a dream, everything is real. It's possible, when we wake right? up, we know this is the dream. It's possible, but we uh, we can't know it for certain. By that uh, by that logic, how do we wake up? By dying. When we die, we wake up in our dream. Well, if it's we only after that we death that dying. we can perceive real truth, then we can't perceive it because we'll be dead. And we won't be in this world. All the religion came for this point to tell you, yeah, but how can that you, know? you are in a dream how can now. You know? Nobody came to, nobody died and then came back. I mean, some people, they uh, physically died, but their brain function didn't cease to uh, function yet. You know that the brain still, uh, our memories, our uh, thoughts are electricity. They are electrical discharges in our brain. That's why it's impossible to replicate um, memories. You can, fucking hell. Uh, you can replicate brain, you can replicate flesh, but you can't replicate the exact, you know, electrical discharges that we had. That's why the memories that people have after they physically, their heart stops and then they are revived with electricity once again. Because electricity is, uh, you know, it's basically the source of life. Um, they don't remember much. They sometimes uh, get amnesia. Why? Because they spent a while without living physically. Physically in terms of heart, in terms of body, the rest of the body without counting the brain. Because the brain is something really strange, something really special. There are accounts of people reviving after they were, you know, registered as dead. People who were buried alive and then tried to escape and suffocated. That's why they usually stick nails underneath the, uh, not nails, the, uh, like, how do you call it, uh, needles underneath the nails of people when they die, to make certain that they are dead and that they are not gonna revive after you bury them, which is pretty a pretty unfortunate fate, fate to have. But look, my point is, I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm not saying anybody's wrong. What I'm saying is, there is no absolute way of telling if you're right. And that's why I don't, I can't bring myself to really 100% believe in a religion. For me, it's about will and about choice. It's not about faith. And there are very big differences between those three uh, entities, the will, choice and faith. You know, in the end, everything we have is faith because we need to uh, have some kind of belief that what we have around us is reality. If we believe, if I believe that everything is a lie, nothing is real, I go crazy. Because there is no way uh, to, to uh, you know, interact with the world around me. There is no point in it because it's not real. It, nothing is real. So I need to have some kind, sorry, some kind of belief, some kind of faith. But at the same time, all religions have been written down and uh, taught by humans. Like, uh, I'm being out shouted here. I'm being out shouted. Why did you guys come here now? Why? Anyway, uh, that's that's my whole point of view. And uh, again, if people disagree, they can. They're more than welcome welcome to give their own opinion. But um, I think that if you want to give your opinion, you need to kind of fundament it with something. You need to explain it. 
and the one who explains it better, you know, in the end, probably his opinion is uh, works better because nobody can prove him wrong. I think that's how it is, basically. What do you say? I don't understand here. you exactly. You, uh, what part? What part? You believe the reality or not? The reality, not true. I don't believe it 100%. No not 100%. I believe that it's probably uh, true. But it might not be at the same time. At the same time. You know how people... Uh, let me give you another example. You know the Soviet Union, right? I spoke to my parents uh, about the Soviet Union. And, uh, you know... Uh, I asked them some things, what have they been taught? And they told me that in the Soviet Union, the world that they taught to kids and to people was different than what they were teaching in the rest of the world. In fact, it was very different from what actually was happening. For them, America was like this big boogeyman that was oppressing its people and everybody around them. The West itself was a boogeyman. Uh, when the people in the Soviet Union themselves, they stayed in, uh, you know, mile-long uh, queues to go to the store to buy butter. To buy butter or buy any basic, uh, uh, you know, uh, food, any basic uh, things that you need for life. The, my point is, if you teach someone to live in a specific way, to uh, protect your own agenda, to protect your own interests, for example, the... Um, the dictator's interest in, in, uh, in uh, the Soviet Union, then those people will obviously not know uh, a closer truth to reality. They will know a truth that is very far from reality. That will be their truth. And some people still believe that the Soviet Union was very good because they had cheap ice cream and cheap uh, sausages in the Soviet Union. Which is, you know, it kind of baffles my mind because uh, they, they don't realize that millions of people died. Millions of people were starved to death and put into gulags and shot uh, for them to have that little plus, which is that cheap ice cream, that cheap uh, sausages, uh, no homeless people, no, um, uh, no unemployed. It's good, but again, what's the price for that? What's the price to pay for that little goodness? It's a huge price to pay. And, uh, I think you need to some step, two, three step to evolve yourself, to improve your mind and you have to, to reach the level of reality. <laughs> Do you know the level of reality? You're the enlightened one. Teach me, master. Teach me. <laughs> good talking to you, man. Good talking to you. Uh, but yeah. That's it. That's it. No more. No more arguing here. No more. An understanding of facts. Oh boy. Young man. Young man. What's your name? Will you stop? What's your name? What's your name? Is a big corner. Don't tell. Lewis. Don't tell. Man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to ITV. So, listen, do you read it? Okay. Do I ask you some questions? Oh, I know Shakespeare. I didn't say that. What? Stop it. Just listen. Because, sir. <laughs> well, if you're having fun, smile. Yeah, you know, that is, there's one. He's like this. He's having fun. 